All right, welcome back to the Tyler Johnstone Podcast. Again, thank you for coming back week to week. Uh, Today we have Britton Golden and Justin Wakefield. Britton is a six-year wide receiver in the NFL. Uh, He's going on his seventh season. He's a free agent right now. And like your boy was an undrafted free agent, so we kind of – we have that respect for one another. Bone is our trainer, (laughs) clearly. (laughs) You can just see the stone-cold – Fresh Look on his eyes. IPA. Fresh IPA. Stone delicious. Always delicious. Cheers. Thank you guys so much for coming on. I appreciate it. Yeah. Oh, man. And if you like the video, you like the podcast, make sure uh, to like, subscribe. Subscriptions are free. And all you got to do is click the button. So we're going to get right into it. Britain, um, we've known each other for like six months now-ish. Four. Four. Ish. But... Let's make it six. It sounds we'll better. Well, in, in gym years, that's about a year. four years that is for a regular long time. people. It's yeah. Because it's every day for six, about... Four to six months in gym years is about five to a normal person. Five yeah, years. That's probably, yeah, that's no question. Because that every day is almost the same. Same, Slow, same. But different. But different. 100%. Touche. So, Britt, you were undrafted free agent. You managed to stay in the league for six years so far. Um, right now, you're rehabbing your hand. Your wrist, forearm, forearm, same thing. Same thing. It's all connected. Yeah, okay. It's all biomedical chain. You know what I mean? Science, that science was, and stuff. That was a big word. It was. I use those. So anyway, yeah. So you're coming back right now, and then for those that for those that don't aren't part of the league or don't know how it works, normally when somebody gets hurt and they're settled or released, you're not gonna get picked up probably until you're cleared, right? Until people are clear. So how how has that waiting process been? Um, I mean, it's it gets stressful, yeah. obviously. Um, but you just you want to come back a hundred percent rather than trying to jump back into it too early and then something happens and it sets you mm. back again and that could be the end of it. Yeah, exactly. So you're just kind of setting yourself up so that when it's time to be ready, you're gonna be ready. Yeah, gotcha. So because you've been in the league six years, I gotta ask, how did this all start? You know, when you before before you're even a rookie. You know, back in your uh, like middle school, middle school days, high school days, how how did you get into sports? You know, where, where are you from? You're from West Texas. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was talking to you earlier. You just said you were at like 30 miles out of Odessa, mm-hmm. which he says was not big deal. I thought it was a big deal because I've watched Friday Night Lights. You said it's not. It wasn't a big deal before Friday Night Lights. Uh, it was. I mean, it was early like 80s, 90s. Odessa Permian was that was. They were the truth. That was what everybody, you know, it was the Friday Night Lights. Now, the Friday Night Lights factor never left. Yeah. Like, even in small town America where I was in West Texas, on Friday night, everything is closed. There's shoe polish on the windows of businesses with people's numbers and names. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And everybody's at the football game. The only thing is open is McDonald's and the 24-hour gas station. Always. So, it's the same. Whether you suck or you're good. Like, yeah. everybody comes to the football. There's nothing else to do in a 5,000 people town so it's yeah. might as well just go to the football game so the town you're from was that any bigger or was it no that's similar? uh well i grew up in andrews texas they had about it had about fifteen thousand people mm-hmm. and then i moved to a small town up in northern texas for a couple of years and then back down to the same area i went to denver city high school which is like 45 minutes from andrews okay so it's all it's a small town west texas oil country do they get a lot of athletes out of there um there's i mean midland odessa's oh, put yeah, a lot of mid- people yeah. out um, Andrews has put a few people out. Mm-hmm. Um, League wise, in Denver City, um, the uh, Stan David, his wife is the uh, volleyball coach out there. Oh, really? But he played in the NFL for. He went to Texas Tech. His wife played okay. volleyball at Texas Tech. Their daughter played volleyball at Texas Tech, mm-hmm. and she was a. All state. She was a hoss. She was crazy. Yeah, she was a beast. She was a hoss. <laughs> she, was a hoss. <laughs> she, she was throwing hay bales growing oh, up, huh? Dude, she was a. She Shocking. just was the number one female athlete to come out of that school. That's out of crazy. City. That is crazy. Like, did, so from like a kind of a smaller area like that, what got? I mean, is it kind of one of those places? And I'm, I could be wrong because I know nothing about your town. Uh, but is it one of those places like you kind of got to play sports or you got to do something crazy in order to get out? Uh, of like that area or, or is it a place you want to get out of or is it what's that like I can't imagine wanting to stay there for the rest of my life I mean, yes yeah. there's nothing absolutely nothing you're in the middle of nowhere mm-hmm. you barely pick up radio stations half the time jeez but it's that's a good yeah. 
So, but I mean, thankfully, it's the oil field. A lot of people yeah. just all they do is they go to high school. Leathernecks. They may or may go to college. Yeah, if they yeah. go, Rough usually necks, ones that go to college, they get out. Yeah, yeah. But if not, I mean, you can make some at the oil fields booming. Why, you know, you make a lot of money. Why do I want to go to college when I can make twenty twenty two dollars an hour out of high school with a yeah. co- with a high school degree? Yeah. But you know, people do it, and people always come back. You know, they might go to college, graduate, get a job, but. They find their way back. Just for me, I told my mom, like, my biggest deal is I want to get out. I don't want to be in I don't want to be in West Texas anymore. Yeah. So sports for me was always my key or my ticket out mm-hmm. of West Texas. So I know you play baseball too. Uh, and Bone, you can kinda of tell me what you think he should have done. Uh, but you played baseball and, and you were pretty competitive in baseball, right? It was decent, yeah. Yeah. So what was kind of um like when you were in high school, or was that when you decided whether you were going to go kind of the football route or whether you're going to focus on baseball? Or what was it like kind of choosing which sport to play, like being good at both? It, it was it was tough. I mean, I played – I did everything in high school. I played basketball, I ran track, played mm-hmm. baseball, played – attempted to play football. Yeah. Um, I wasn't a huge football fan. I didn't like the fact of getting hit. Even in high school? Even in high school. I didn't start, like, enjoying playing football until probably my end of my sophomore year. Okay. Really, my junior year. Did you play like Pop Warner and stuff out there? I tried. I was there was too much pain involved, and I was like, "This <laughs> is not for me. I will stick to baseball." And this is coming basketball. from a wide receiver. This is, uh, this is understandable. <laughs> it's not a trench dog. No, not not a trench, not a trench dog. dog. That's, that's okay though. Not that's all right. All. But yeah, like I, I mean, I did. I tried the whole thing. It was just I went into my right before my sophomore year of high school. I told all the I told coaches I'm I'm just going to do off season basketball and track and baseball. Yeah. That's all I'm going to do. I don't want to. None of the spring ball, none of the... They came and took me out of my house. My mom was like, get him out of my house. And two days <laughs> rolled around. And <laughs> ended up, you know, it ended up being fun after yeah. that. But Kind of got used to it. Yeah, that, so, was, that was it. And what was like recruiting like? Did you get recruited out of high school very heavily or what's, oh, what happened there? I had there? nothing. I had nothing football-wise. I had no no offers. <laughs> really? What about like baseball and nothing? I had a few, I had a few offers. Okay. Uh, Division two, JUCOs for baseball. Mm-hmm. Uh, a few NAI schools. Um my dad really wanted me to go cuz i mean school was paid for in yeah. some of those smaller schools for baseball school would have mm-hmm. been paid for um and i s- football was still kind of new to me yeah. cuz i wasn't like i didn't put my entire like heart and soul into football at the time yeah I, like the focus the focus that yeah. you need to like growing up go, i was like yeah. i want to i want to go to the nba then mm-hmm. i looked at my you know my height as i was growing and was like and how yeah, tall are you again you're not how like, how you weren't <laughs> Wasn't you weren't growing. growing. I, it, how, how you once weren't you figured growing. out you weren't going over the uh, you know the five eleven six yeah. foot mark, it was kind of like. Eh. It's kind of so. funny too. Like when you watch basketball, and I I didn't go to like an NBA game until uh, I was at Oregon. We went to a Spurs game. Yeah. We were down in San Antonio, and I didn't realize like when you see somebody on the court, it's like a point guard, and you're like, oh, he's way shorter than everybody, and, and then you six, stand four. next to that fool, and he's your height, mm-hmm. like at six, like my yeah. height, six six. Yeah. I was like, oh, yeah. So like, that, wow. so I'm short even, in the NBA, even like, on like TV because they're all so tall. Yeah, that they blend in together. You're like, oh, it's not. Yeah, you don't, don't really crazy. notice it until you like see Devin person. Booker, for instance. Freaks. When I like actually went stood next to him, we played basketball with him at the uh, Suns owner's house a couple summers ago. Okay. And like, yeah, you know, I'd seen him, but like when I actually stood next to him, I didn't know he was like. Six four, six five. I don't know how tall he might be taller than that. Yeah. But like I stood there and I was like, damn. Like you see him walk next to Tyson Chandler, and yeah. you're like, Man, he okay, he's no no, he's not. He's tall. Yeah. They're all tall. <laughs> Very it's, tall. It's yeah. ridiculous. And can move it, it's you 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 try to blame the athleticism on like every sport says that they're the most athletic sport. Yeah. But to do what they do with oh. a basketball in their hands. Yeah. I think the only thing more athletic than being a basketball player, honestly, is like being an old lineman. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, trench dog, you know, hundred yeah, percent. No, they're cra- like when you watch LeBron James, like last night he put up forty three. Again. Just to do it. Uh, and how big is he? He's like six nine, six, six nine, eight, six, six nine, nine. two hundred like fifty pounds. Hitting fadeaways from like the three point line, basically. Just what do you do when that comes you down can't, the middle? You can't do yeah, yeah. you can't do anything against him down the middle. You can't do anything on his fadeaway. It's freakish because that man. Oh, I want to see him play tight end so oh, yeah. so bad. I, oh, no. oh my so, god! I want like I want everything to restart kind of just once. Just see LeBron James go play tight. The end. football rock. Oh, he'd be a freak. He's an all state wide receiver in high school. All state. Jesus. 
So, like, for you, you knew you weren't going to be a LeBron James. Yeah, I knew. So, I, I, <laughs> I kind of figured it was going to be baseball or football at the yeah. time. So, yeah, yeah. you know, the baseball route was cool. I thought about it. But, like I said, football was kind of new. So, I told my mom, I was like, I kind of want to play football in college. And I had, a, I had a few coaches that were like, you could do it. You just have to find a way to get in. And yeah. we found my mom found a tryout at West Texas A&M, Division Two. Your mom, so like your parents are like looking for you. Like, yeah, yeah. Mom was like, you want to do what you want to do. We're going to mm-hmm. help. She went and got highlight tapes from the high school and That's sent sick. it to the place. And we found a tryout at West Texas. And they called me at the district track meet. Yeah. And they were like, hey. Or my secretary at the high school called my, my the phone and was like, hey. You got a letter back from WT after that tryout. Yeah. Do you want me to open it? Or do you want me to wait? I was like, open it. and Tell me what it says. And mm-hmm. then I was, she was like, it's from the athletic department. I was yeah. Like, Please open it. And they were like, yeah, we'd like for you to be a preferred walk-on. So I was like, done. So, I'm, so you chose was, that over like some, some other D2 uh, like full rides from baseball. Yeah. That's crazy. See, that, like turning down that much like potential money like just to follow football because you kind of – that's where you wanted to go. That's where your passion lied. That yeah. is a crazy risk to me. It's a big risk. Yeah, and but it like, but it was gloom. A, it looked it looked gloomy at first. Yeah, yeah. Just the red shirt thing, and because you redshirted. Yeah, yeah. And it's 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 a scary feeling when you're looking up and you're like, oh man, I don't know if I'm ever gonna play here. Yeah. And then you go through it the next year, and it's still not what you wanted. And then you think because people leave your sophomore year, you're like, yes, yeah, it's gonna yeah, be I'm, me. I'm there. I'm the star now. Then here comes a JUCO guy. Yeah. And you're like, yeah. oh, and you know. I, unfortunately, literally, unfor- I mean, fortunately for me, yeah, what uh, was some it people that? got, it was my so- about halfway through my sophomore yeah. year, Timing. some people got in trouble. A couple guys, a couple receivers failed the drug test. Um, I got to, I popped in, I got to start, and it just like how'd you do? Off. How'd you do that yeah. first game starting? Uh, I actually got to start the first game of the year because oh, wow. the Juco guy they brought in didn't really know the playbook yeah. completely yeah. yet. So I got to start, but then that ended really quick. I went like the next five games and played probably. There was a, three or four games that I probably had two plays on offense. It was a very depressing time and then just shot up like game six. So what was it like, you know, kind of be no, like think in your head, in your head because of these other guys that weren't in trouble yet, you were kind of going to be the backup probably. Mm-hmm. Like, so what what did you do kind of stay focused in order for that one time when you like luck kind of ran its course yeah. and you got your shot? How how were you ready for that at that point? And um, how important was it you like what were you doing that gave you the opportunity when it was there to excel and, and kind of push on from there? Um, you know, I, everything was just continuing to to grind, you know, the cliche thing in practice, mm-hmm. um, in the weight room. You know, I was never a huge, you know, like lifting weights person. I don't want to be super, you know, I don't care about all that yeah, yeah, head yeah. stuff. But I don't care about all that yeah. head stuff. <laughs> it Whoa. was it went off. insulting the rest yeah. of us. On, see come us see us on Tuesday, Tuesday and Thursday, yeah. though. That's true, yeah. Shirt's off. But, um, yeah, I just I just uh, didn't like nah. it half the time. Shirt's I didn't off. want to. Yeah, but, like. you know, just keep going, keep going. And, like you said, it got that lucky break, and it felt like everything just – fell in line for the rest of that season and mm-hmm. it was just you ended I ended up from being nobody dude my jersey number was 41 at wide receiver <laughs> huh <laughs> I didn't know that was an eligible yeah, jersey me number. either I didn't either uh, at wide receiver so it, it was that's what a bunch of my friends blamed it on they were like that's why so like yeah my sophomore year I ended up I had like 950 yards and only started seven games what yeah so you were just the go to so it was I mean I just ran deep it was yeah. it just fade post 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 another post yep. that was all it was. You so, couldn't could guard the speed, or what? I mean, it was. It really doesn't matter. In in on the outside, you can run a four or five, and you can run a four or three. But yeah. if you run a route the right way, especially a post route, if you get on a guy's toes and then break him off and make him determine which way he wants to go, I watched a guy in front of me that ran four six that was toasting four three DBs. Yeah, and you you look up on the sideline, scratching your head like. It's kind of one of those things like Ow. just out technique people. Yeah, like, you know, small things. See, that's the crazy thing too because like, – and you guys have talked – or I don't know if it was you. Is, uh, we train to some running backs and what they talk about a lot when they're watching O-line guys do their O-line stuff with, uh, with Bill mm-hmm. um, after training's over. Is like, man, running back is like the least technical position ever. It's kind of just like it's more vision and like knowledge of the game and patience. Whereas O line and some of these other positions are so much more technique. Like it for O line, it's like if you miss your hand placement by like a few inches each, the leverage is gone. You lost, and you're gonna get beat. And so that's crazy. I actually, I never like talked to a receiver about technique, 
and how like so you can be less athletic than the person across from you but beat them all with technique I'm telling you it, there's multiple types of receivers you have deep threat guys that you're literally just gonna send them off mm-hmm. you've got possession guys who you know is gonna run a great route and is gonna be where you want him to be he might not break too many tackles or get anything after that but yeah. you know he's gonna be where you want him to be at all times he's gonna make the catch and then you have freaks like Julio yeah. and A.B. and Larry and people like that. You know what I'm talking about? Or yeah, just yeah, yeah. DeAndre Hopkins type stuff. Sammy, we're all cats yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That are just, it doesn't matter what you do. You just put them in a situation. And they're ball hogs. And they, they, they find the ball. Yeah. I mean, I guess you could say four. You got cats like Tavon Austin and stuff like that. John Smokey Brown. Mm-hmm. J.J. and cats that are just ridiculously fast but at the same time run. Can run rather. Tavon Austin can do everything. Yeah, yeah. He's been a running back, receiver. It Mm -hmm. just doesn't. It doesn't matter what you do. Like you put the. He just needs the ball in his hands. Yeah. So you just when you when you mix like a LeBron James, you mix the crazy athleticism with the right technique. I'm telling you, in technique wise, like if you like I said, you could have somebody that doesn't really. Mm -hmm. He's not the fastest guy, or he's not the most athletic receiver in the world. But if he he runs perfect routes, like he's gonna win. Nine out of ten times. On the flip side of that, though, too, what I've noticed, and especially, and like usually these guys phase out um, before college. So in college, you got guys that are like crazy talented, and like you see their athleticism, how fast they are, and just like they can do they freakish just things. Fade out, but they just fade out because they don't run their routes nice, and I mean, they don't learn the offense. Had like, no work ethic because they just they got by on talent their whole lives yeah I've seen it I've seen it there's cats that came through my school mm-hmm. that came through West Texas A&M yeah there's cats that were that could be starting in this league right now mm-hmm. receiver Say, DB anything like we're talking division 2 cats that just fell through but cats are the most athletic people I've ever seen yeah ever we had a guy named Tyson Williams that was Unbelievable! Probably six one, probably two hundred and fifteen pounds. The strongest dude. You mm-hmm. put him in the weight room, though. It was like, I mean, he could do stuff, but he wasn't like gonna get underneath five hundred pounds on squat and like nah. impress you. Nah. But you put him on the football field, and he's putting linebackers down like it's fun, like just running off the line and shoulder checking them, and they're out of the complete play. And then you throw him the ball, and he's catching yeah. everything. Yeah. Is ridiculous breaking tackle. I saw him break nine. T- I, there's a. It's on YouTube. I'll show it to you later. I yeah. saw him in a game break nine tackles. He caught a quick little hitch or out route. Uh-huh. The entire defense for Abilene Christian was on his back, and somehow I'm trying to block this other guy. Yeah. Somehow I just see Tyson spin, duck something, and then he's running down the sideline, and I'm like. The entire, <laughs> yeah, I was probably on the ground. Yeah, you, <laughs> I probably tried to block and got knocked down. And you got so, knocked yeah. yeah, it happens. I respect the blocking receivers though. Like one of uh, we had a guy Keenan Lowe at Oregon, and he was a good receiver. He always caught the ball when it was sent to him. But this man like sold out every single route, even when he knew he wasn't getting the ball. And then when it was time to block, he was just yeah in the dude's face constantly. Like net, like, and he was small. Like I don't even know how tall he. He was a small receiver. But he was just a nuisance to these DBs. I really never let him up. He would drive him like 20, you don't have 25 to be yards. strong in the blocking thing. You no. don't have to block hard. Mm-mm. All you got to do is be a pain. Yeah. Just Everybody does so many way. Yeah, yeah. I had a, one scout one time when I was in college, came to practice, and his thing, what he told me was, I need to be more like aggressive blocking like he was talking about you know like the Steve Smiths and the Hans Wars and cats that yeah. just want to run in there and bang. Yeah, it's like, and yo, I'm like, yeah, you know, people are built for that. <laughs> but like, yeah, he was, hey, yeah. Hey, dude, yeah. I mean, and the crazy part was, he was like, "That's the only way you're gonna make it into the league." And I was like, "Well, one, that was kind of a messed up thing to say." Two, um, and I was in kind of 175 pounds. It doesn't matter. I, I'm gonna run in there and try to deplete that Cam Chancellor. This 242 pounds, and I'm gonna fall down. It's not gonna matter. Physics, I will go backwards. Physics, yeah, sir. yeah. Like, <laughs> And it literally, you get, ah, you you literally can do it. Like, people are like, you have to be, bah, and be knocking them backwards and. Disrupt. I'm telling you, if it's a a run play in the middle, I see, yeah, just go bang. Just make sure he's not in the right, in the hole that you're trying to get through. Yeah. But on the outside, you don't have to be locked and engaged. Literally, just play basketball. (laughs) Get in his way. There's been times where I got turned around somehow uh, in a really unathletic move. Maybe my cleat got stuck. I don't know. But you get turned around, and it's a pass play, and I'm pass blocking, and I've I've had to box dudes out. 
That's all it is. Like, I literally had to throw my arms back and like shuffle, like literally box them out from the quarterback. And it's it's like the worst feeling ever because you feel like a non-athlete, but if the ball gets off, it doesn't matter how you got it's it It's like done. playing golf. It doesn't matter yeah. how the ball gets in the hole as Here long as go. it gets in the hole. Mm-hmm. So wait, hold on, golf. Here you go- go. You Here golf every go. day, huh? No, not I'm every so day. I'm so sick of hearing the G word. <laughs> Oh, cause he's re- he's rehabbing he's rehabbing, rehabbing his forearm, and we got our trainer here. There's about three of them, and they roll on a three pack, and every day they come in. Oh my back! I oh. go, oh, were you guys golfing? And they all try to keep this secret. One of them lets it slip eventually, and I'm tired of hearing about golf. <laughs> all three of them are terrible, and they get off on one beating the other one. Oh yeah. And think that makes them good, but really all three of them are terrible. Hey, competitors, man. I'm it's so the sick of tired. You need it. Sick and tired of hearing the G word. <laughs> so moving on. Moving on. Uh, <laughs> we won't. I mean, we don't want to make Justin upset because then we'll have to run a lot or do something ridiculous. And He'll make up another ridiculous just ab. Just make up some curls. stupid. Stu- yeah, we'll do stone curls. I'm down with that. We'll do, yeah, reps. I wish Stone sponsored this podcast. That'd be great. Stone, tune in sometime. We'll take some free beers. <laughs> so, uh, at, so you were a sophomore. That was when you first kind of got your your shine on. You're welcome yeah. for that. And uh, after that, so when did you when did you start to realize, okay, I, I want to take this into a professional career? Was that always your goal, or was it kind of just like you were playing because you were in college and, and you kind of want to continue the dream? But when was it that you kind of knew it was possible? Um, probably my junior in high school. I told one of my teachers. She, um, you know, they asked what everybody was planning on doing, you know, after high school and after college. Yeah. And I told her, I was like, I'm going to be a, <laughs> I said, I'm going to be a professional athlete. And she basically told me like, um, you know, what you might want to think about, you know, yeah. something else. You should probably think about something else, which is smart I though. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a valid yeah. response. You're, you live in West Texas. Like, you know, ain't too many people that just from... You statistically know. speaking, yeah, statistically it's like it's, speaking. A, it's an okay response, but it's you like, know. also, come on, don't kill the kids' dreams. Yeah, you know, you never know. Yeah, Sometimes no it's better to kill their dreams early. Yeah. So, you know, I you know, I thought about it forever. <laughs> he's just drunk. <laughs> he's stenciling some Jerry Rice. <laughs> That's like, it. That's who I want to be. This will be me. <laughs> but probably my, after my junior year of college, you know, I had another uh, good season, and I yeah. was like, I think I can do this. And that was my whole, like, mentality after that. I was like, I'm... My, right before my senior year of football, one of my buddies would play running back. He got his arm sleeved in a tattoo. And I had tattoos. I just didn't, I hadn't gone below the elbow yet. Yeah. Because, you know, I was like, I want to, I might need a job. I yeah, you'll take it you seriously know? so far. You know? yeah, so yeah. I told, he told me right before we, it was like probably a week before we started two days, my senior year. And he goes, I got a tattoo right here. I got just to the bird. It just stopped okay. right there. So and just he was below like, the elbow. He goes, why don't you just go all the way down with the wrist? Why don't you just finish the full sleeve? And I was like, ah, bro, he was like, you you, you want to go to the league, right? And I was like, yeah, that's my ultimate goal. He said, do you believe that you're going to make it to the league? Ooh, and I was boy. like, mm-hmm. I said, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's literally one of those moments. <laughs> so I looked at him and I was like, what do you mean? Are you going to be a like, savage or are you just going to like, literally. are you going to go half in or are you going to go all in? That's what he said. He said, so if you're going to the league, why don't you just get a full sleeve already? If you already know you're going. So they went to the local and pub. Literally. My guy was still in town because he literally tatted me the day before. He was still in town, and I was like, yeah, yo, finish you this. know what? Let's just go ahead and do a sleeve. And he was like, all right, let's go. So you, bur- you burned your bridges or you burned your boats in the form of getting a full sleeve. Burned it. <laughs> There's no, there is no there professional no world for me after this. Yeah, so I was just like, that was like it. It was like. I'm not going into business. I'm going into football. Yeah, if you're like a rapper, it's like, yeah. this is how I become a I rapper. I'm going to get a face tattoo and that's all I better can Better hope do. SoundCloud pops. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, or you're at Walmart, so, yodeling yeah, your heart out. Yodeling that's your heart That's right. Out. You ain't got to be a rapper to make it. Nope. Yellow kid. I mean, this day and age, anything can get you. Yodeling boys on the top 50 US. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> that's so true. He's on the top 50 US. Oh, uh, that. Just yeah. bless that child, man. Good for him. Great for him. So like you burn your so you burn your boats in the form of tattoos, and was that was that so that's like the first time you were like, all right, this is what I'm doing now. I'm Basically. going to be a football player. I mean that's, that was my that the goal was already in hand at the time, but mm-hmm. that was where it hit, and it was like, oh, this is you you have no there's no turning back now. This is yeah. what you have to do, and it it, it at work you thought it worked. <laughs> he immediately went home. 
Yeah. He's in the mirror with the football on his sleeve. <laughs> <laughs> Here we come, NFL. <laughs> uh, NFL or bust. Uh, NFL uh, or bust. <laughs> hey, we got it. Tag, where is it at? NFL, NFL. or bust. Show it. You got to show it. <laughs> show the can- It's Yeah, NFL or bust. So you made it. You made uh, it. So, well, so what was like? So after ju- so junior year, did did you graduate early or did you go senior year? I I played my senior year. Senior year was when it was my first year over a thousand yards. So it was well, it was solid, good. solid. Yeah. <laughs> um, and it's also been my last year over a thousand yards. <laughs> Undrafted life yeah, happens. Yeah, you know, you, know, you never know. Hopefully yeah. not. Maybe, but um, it was the senior year went well. Like everything was good. Um. We put up numbers, which mm. is what you have to do in Division Two to get things, you know. And I, I had scouts there, you know, every other week or every week, every other week, they were there. Um, I talked to them. It wasn't anything like, oh, you're going, you know, top five rounds or anything. I kind of knew that. Yeah. But you know, there was talk maybe at the maybe seventh round, maybe not. It was mostly undrafted. So yeah, you know, it, I, I knew where I stood. Yeah, that's good. But, that was like, you know. go to college, I knew I was going to redshirt wherever I went. Yeah. So, like, my redshirt year was a builder, whereas other people, when they redshirt, like, it hurt their mm-hmm. hurt their ego. Right. Yeah, so. So, it's kind of like one of those things a little bit. Mm-hmm. And who, uh, who, so who picked you up? So, the draft was over. You went undrafted. And who picked you up? Uh, I signed with Chicago. Okay. I was playing slow pitch softball in a league <laughs> in Dallas, Texas. No way. I had to feel the dreams. I <laughs> had the craziest thing. So, I get the phone call. What do you mean at the Field of Dreams? Like, the, a, like they from the movie? Big, no, no, no. They have a big... <laughs> it's like Kevin Costner, oh it's my like gosh. It's like a big slow pit. Or it, I think they do little, little league baseball games there too, but it's everything. Mm-hmm. They have Giant Stadium, Fenway Park, Arlington. Okay. It's like a whole bunch that's of... Sick. Like, that yeah, they yeah, made yeah, it yeah, into it. Series? They do it. I mean, I'm sure they do that That's there really too. sick, yeah. But it's, it's dope. So we had a slow pitch tournament there. Mm-hmm. And that's why we were in Dallas during draft weekend. Mm-hmm. So we did that. And I got a phone call before we got to the game. I get there, everybody's like, how did it go, whatever. And I was like, I'm going to Chicago. I just signed the little undrafted contract, yeah. you know, boom. So now I'm getting phone calls from, like, the team, whatever, that they were going to send the contract over. So I hadn't signed it yet. I had to wait till I got home after the slow pitch yeah. <laughs> tournament game. You games. signed your contract at home? Yeah, they faxed it to my boy's parents' house. That's interesting because I signed, like, I never heard of that. Usually you sign, like, the first day you report. Yeah, they, they, uh, they faxed. They faxed my undrafted thing to uh, my boy's house in Dallas. What? It was pretty dope. That's intense. But yeah, I ran into a foul pole because I was talking on the phone trying to play left field. No. <laughs> <laughs> Actually? Had, like I had the, uh, you have the Chicago. No I don't have the video of it, but I like, had Chicago was on the phone with me telling me, trying like explaining things. Yeah. And I was literally in the middle of the game and we only had like 10 players. So it was like. Slow pitch only allowed 10. Yeah. So I just did that. And Dude, I'm so like funny. running, trying to do yeah. this at the same time. And I looked up for the ball. And all of a sudden, I catch and shoulder and it fell. Bam. I was like, ah. And you're injured. Your career's over. And it's over. <laughs> as <laughs> quick as it started. Drop the phone. <laughs> throw it back in. And pick it back up. Hey. Like that. Just Boys, like that. Just like that. Throw the phone back. <laughs> um, no way, dude. Yeah, I, it was wild. I half don't believe that. Yeah. Not I, Yeah. And so, so you, so you're on draft. I think you were on, were you on practice squad that year. Or? No, my rookie year, I was <laughs> at home with them. Um, really, the whole year until um, I got released, final cut, and I got picked up week fourteen. Okay, I went back for week, a workout. What was waiting like your rookie year? Because what was that like? Your rookie? Did you think it was gonna not I thought happen? It was over. Yeah, I did. I mean, I was back home. She was finishing um, school, mm-hmm. and your wife. Yep, yeah, and. The little one was born. Mm-hmm. Had just she just popped out <laughs> that April before. Yeah. So I was at home, and after a, about a month and a half of waiting and do nothing, it was kind of like um, I'm running out of training camp money. Yeah. And, That's yeah, real. Cause you're not getting a check every still. month from yeah. school. Yeah. So anything. I was like, ooh. So I went and called some friends of mine that owned a car detail business, and mm-hmm. I literally detailed cars for the next four months you detailed cars in order to keep you afloat until yeah. you got picked up again and the crazy part is i was detailing cars my boy got a workout for an arena team in san antonio yeah we drove from amarillo to san antonio to go to this arena workout mm-hmm. and you know i they were like hey we'd like you to come back for another workout we'll be in contact with you and literally 
two days later, Chicago called me. What? And I went for a workout in Chicago. They were talking about, you know, for sure we'll give you futures for 2013. Yeah. And, you know, in my head, I'm like, cool, but, like, I'm broke now. Like, <laughs> I need a yeah. job now. I'm, yeah. I'm tired of washing rich people's cars. Like, yeah. It's, I'm, I want to be a rich yeah. people getting this car washed. <laughs> I'm tired of that. So, I went back. She graduated from uh, West Texas, and we moved to Austin where her parents live. We were in Austin maybe a day. And the next morning, I got a phone call from my agent. says, Jacksonville is going to call you. And I got on a flight that next morning. Like, they called me, like, what was it, 8 o'clock in the morning? And my flight was at 10. And we lived 45 minutes from the airport. Jeez. So, and, like, I thought it was another workout. I had yeah. literally a bag with some, like, two pairs of shorts, underwear, toothbrush, like, shirt. Showed up in Jacksonville, and I was there for the next three weeks for the last on their practice squad. Dude. And then did it all over again. Went back to Chicago 2013 because everybody in Jacksonville got fired. Yeah. Got cut again, final cut. And then popped up in Arizona 2013, week two. Dude. And been here ever since. Been there ever since. Practice squad and then rostering it for about five years. Staying afloat. Staying afloat. Staying afloat, which is all that matters <laughs> at that point. So what was and it like? Made it straight out of camp this last year. Yeah, you did. Yeah. Right out of camp. Yeah, right out of camp. You got on the roster. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I did it. I've I've made two day one rosters. So for those that don't know, the average career in the NFL is three years. That's six from very very humble beginnings, and just yeah. because. So what 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 do you attribute like your ability to stick around to? Like what what was it that set you apart from the guys that they were just like you know what no we're not getting him any more calls, he's done, let's leave it alone. So I, do you think it was like your off season prep? Was it? I, mindset, I, what was it? I'd like to say mindset mm -hmm. on top of a little help with the man upstairs. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, yeah, like, I, I was just determined. I've always been determined. I've always had to start at the bottom to get to the top, if that's what I say. Like, we moved in my freshman year in high school, and I was on the freshman B team, basketball team. Uh -huh. Like, no one I could have been. I should have been on the other one. But, like, whatever. Yeah. And then in college, you know, you've got guys that are playing, and you're like, I'm better than him. But it's not my time. Kind of just keeps you hungry. Yeah, you just, yeah. just the little chip. You want to keep going. You want to keep going. Like, start at the bottom, get to the top, mix just it keep up, on keeping on, man. Hey, stone IPA. Just stone IPA. Keep on keeping <laughs> on. You know, you know what I mean? That's hey. ridiculous. No, I'm with that. Though. So it's basically like it's it's kind of just not giving in to the negativity. And when, when you're not making it at the time, not acting like that's going to be your whole thing. Like not yeah. acting like that's going to be your whole future. Just and kind it's of hard. continuing on. Yeah. And everybody goes. I have. I've had times where, like, even now, like I, you, you try to think positive with it, but mm -hmm. it could be it. You never yeah. know. So at the I mean, same reality time, is reality you know, at the same time. And that's his personality. It's almost a blessing and a curse for me because he's the kind of guy that I almost have to hold the reins on sometimes. Yeah, he'll even. He'll be going to run routes with the the quarterbacks we know or train NFL yeah. quarterbacks, and I got to call the quarterback to say, "Hey, make sure you don't let Britain run routes till the sun goes down." You yeah, know, we still have to he'll because he'll be out there until the sun goes down running routes. Yeah, so I have to call people and literally say, "Hey, I'm not gonna be able to be there today. Make sure Brit gets his ass off the field at a decent time." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> his hand can't take it yet. Uh. So he, he'll literally he's one that I more have to. Hey, we gotta take her easy now. Back it off. Yeah, back her down a little bit. Yeah, relax. Otherwise, he would go nonstop. Yeah, I mean that's. I, I think but that's, that's kind also of the, quality. the mentality that got him to where he's at. Exactly, that's quality you need to have in order to like stick around this league for sure. You know, um, I mean, I think that's pretty much it. You were able to get, you were able to stick around six years. You came from humble beginnings, and it was kind of just that passion, and that thirst that got you to where you are now, six year NFL vet. Uh, probably gonna get. Uh, we're hoping for a seventh. You know, we'll see seven. what happens once you're yeah. fully healed and together. Yeah. Um, but yeah, guys, I appreciate y'all being on the show today. My it was Thanks fun. For having. It was a good time. Yeah, absolutely, always a good time. Uh, and now it's time where we go and we ask the questions that the fans have written out for you. Ooh, have fun. So the first fan so is <laughs> my fiance and her coworkers want to know. Ooh. Ooh. What would? Easy. So this is Ashley. She's my fiance. Easy. We. Uh, what would you tell rookie Brit if you so, twenty nine year old six year vet Brit? What would you go back and tell rookie Brit? <laughs> like, go play. Good for me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, go play baseball. No, I wouldn't have told him that. Um, uh, I just uh, what I know now. I've just you know 
as far as how the league works. You know, just don't don't get too down on yourself when you're not when you don't make that first roster when you're you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like you're not gonna go in immediately, especially being an undrafted guy and make a huge impact. So and it's hard to get those reps. Don't I think my rookie year I wasn't getting a whole bunch of reps that I wanted to. And you know, especially in the off season program, you mm-hmm. you feel like you're like, oh, I'm not getting these. I'm done. Like this is my it's you know, just, spot to yeah, me. it's terrible. Yeah. So I, and just have fun with it. I think I didn't have. I don't. I don't think I had as much fun in the beginning. I think yeah. my first couple camps were so. And even like the last two years, I think this this last year was probably the most fun I've had at camp mm. in six years doing it. Every other time has been like... And you made it on the roster after this yeah. camp. Was that your first time ever doing Second that? Second time. Second time, yeah. But, that's but it was crazy. just like, this year was more of, dude, just just go play. Go have fun. Mm-hmm. Like, you, there's nothing, you can't control what that GM wants upstairs. Yeah. Or that owner wants or that coach wants. You yeah. don't get to make that final decision. Mm-hmm. The only thing you can do is go out there and put your best on tape and just pray that it's good enough. Yeah. So I think I that would be something that I t- I would tell JBD and, just ball dog yeah and, just ball and, and it's <laughs> so, Zach Mettenberger it's, always said JBD man doesn't matter what you do just ball it's yeah. so crazy too because at that high level you have to be performing well at a time something opens up yeah it gets so every it's, day it's, you don't have a chance to nah, be bad you can't have a bad day you got to hope something even opens up and the slim risk that that does even open up you have mm. to be at your best yeah. And, slide, yeah, that. and B.A. said that I, he said that every year he was like with the quality of guys that we had in the receiver room mm-hmm. here in Arizona, Arizona so you can't yeah, <laughs> you can't have a bad day he said it at the beginning of every training camp especially the receiving core mm-hmm. he said you, you have to show up every day and I think that stuck with a lot of guys out there it was like it's real so even if you thought you had a bad day you literally went to bed that night and everything was I'm tomorrow's gone. gotta be Perfect. Yeah. Or I'm done. Or I'm gone. So you just, t- just have more fun with it and uh, be it perfect. Out, yeah. <laughs> it wasn't perfect, but no, you know it was you enough to, done, yeah. to stick around, man. To that's stick. The, that's the biggest part. And the next question is from Kyle Janda uh, from Hamilton High School. He's a football player. Um, so what do you do in the off season, like kind of athletically, to kind of give you an edge? You think? I work out with J Bone. <laughs> Fisher Sports, Fisher Institute. Fisher Institute. Um, yeah, I mean, the thing is just... Let your boy J-Bone know. You got to give your body time. Yeah. Which is hard. The hardest thing in the world for me to sit and do nothing. Yeah. Confident, because you need your confidence. Yeah. Right? Well, and it's the thing, but, you know, and I think the biggest thing in the offseason wise is give your body that time to... Cause the NFL is a long football mm-hmm. season. I mean, if you, don't, if you don't make the playoffs, you're still playing. If you're not a... First rounder, starter guy that's going to yeah. start day one. You're playing 20 games because you're going to play all four preseason games, mm-hmm. and then you have a 16 game schedule. Yeah, and if uh, you're playing during all that, that's, that's, 20, that's games. 20 games. Oh, my then if God. you make the playoffs, you're just that's just bonus games. You're just hurt. Ultimately, you can play 24, 25 games in mm-hmm. one year. Yeah, so it's like going in college. You play 12, maybe you know, sometimes 13. You get to week 12, and it's just like, wait, come on. Like, I've been doing this. Yeah. It, yeah. So, yeah, it's just – you just got to give your body time, and then when it's time to to go, it's, it's time switch. to go. You got to be able to flip it. Mm-hmm. And ready. And it's got to be it, – it gets monotonous, too. Yes. I promise you, when you're doing the same thing over and over every week for yeah. a month and a half, and you're just like, do I really want to get up at I 7? I hear that. Yeah. Oh, I've been doing it since August. I hear that. Yeah, I'm telling you. <laughs> I'm telling you. Just you're just like, yeah. I really want to get up this morning and go do this. So let's do it later. Yeah, and yeah. then if you don't go, you you know it. You're like somebody else. Somebody just got better than me. So great question, Kyle. Appreciate that one. And the last one is because uh, it's May fourth, so May the fourth be with you. Oh, mm. he's gonna botch this one. Yeah, yeah, he is. Totally done. So the back pocket podcast uh, says, what is the right way to watch Star Wars? Do you start with? The original trilogy, so like the older ones from the 70s, or do you start with episode one and watch them all the way through? What do you do? What would you do if you were rewatching it? I know you said you haven't watched them for a long time. What I haven't would you do? seen all of them. I've seen all the old ones, the three old ones. Okay, with. that's the most important. That, that is the is. most important. I've mm-hmm. seen all the old ones. Mm-hmm. Um, I haven't seen all those. I saw the first and the second one with Anakin. 
Yep. Oh, here we yeah. go. He's just name dropping. That's yeah, the name. Yeah, yeah. Name aside, he knows what's going on. Uh, you know, uh, but what about the droid oh, attack yeah. on the Wookiees? Yeah, yeah, okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Woo, gone over the top of the head. Um, but I think if I was going to rewatch it now, I would start with those the Anakin ones. Episode one. And then Episode go all the way to the old ones. Anakin His ones. Go-to. Yeah. Oh, that's all you I got. That's all I know. So, I think it's the best. I'm going to chime in. I think it's the best you watch it the natural way it's supposed to go. Yeah. But it's a little easier to follow if you watch it when it, you yeah. put it in the sequential. Yeah, so like yeah, episode one follow. through the new ones right. that are coming out. But if you watch it the way they came out, I mean, that's the best way to See, watch I, it. See, I'm going to have to go the easy way. You know, I got to uh, like... Anakin. Yeah. Exactly. I don't yeah. really have He's a revisit Anakin. <laughs> oh, yeah. Too, too many... Uh, yeah. He's got to revisit Early Anakin. CTE. Too many. I've had early yes. CTE, yeah. Yeah, we all do. That's what we'll call it. At this it. point. We'll figure it out. Stone IPAs. Stone IPAs. <laughs> well, guys... Thanks again. I appreciate you guys good. coming through. We're going to have to do this again, probably, eventually. We'll see I'm sure. we'll what happens. Out. We'll figure something out. But thanks again for watching. Uh, make sure to like, subscribe, review, leave your comments. And if you have people you want me to interview or questions, just leave them in the comments and we're going to ask them for the next people. But uh, take her easy. <laughs>